right now during this pandemic, a lot of us are told that we can't do very much, can we? We can't go out of our homes except for, we can't do this, we can't do that. And oftentimes people also say that they can't paint. Well, I wanna dispel that myth and show you how you can paint and how you can enjoy this with someone you care about. So let's turn I can't into, I can't believe I painted that. Ready? Let's go on that adventure. Okay, so we're here at Ida Lee Park and we were walking around looking at what was in bloom and checking out the beautiful tulip magnolia out behind me. And then I hear my name and it's a friend, <laughs> Jean Fenwick, who is a master gardener. I'm delighted to have us learn from Jean a little bit about a plant that many of you know that's right between us here, this one right here. Let's see if you recognize it. So, Jean, tell us a, um, a little bit about the Virginia Bluebell. Well, it's, it's pretty already, but it's very early in the beginning spring growth, and it will have light blue and shades of kind of a pink all over it. So right now it's not as pretty as you will find it in three or four days. However, it's one of our favorite plants. It's called an ephemeral, ephemeral because it disappears after the season. It's as if it had never been there. Huh. Yes. And is this a native plant then? It is a native plant. And we try as much as possible to put as many natives in our garden. Do you want to tell us anything about master gardeners? Well, I'd like to say that people are welcome to come to this garden. Um, Actually, the garden is open all year for people to stroll along and look. But if you want to learn about different things, we have a season that starts in April where the master gardener workers volunteers, and we're all volunteers. And we will talk to you about what the plants are. Gardens. There, there are many types of gardens, and so when you come, you can get many ideas on maybe what might work in your yard. Well, Jean, thank you so much oh, for this welcome. impromptu videotaping interview to share a little bit of joy and a little something oh. new as we enter today, the first day of spring Wow! for this, this new year. This is exciting. Yep, first and day of spring. I am happy that I was here. <laughs> oh, me too. All right, it's been fun. Come back. No, they're down by the water. Beautiful. Look at that. A little bouquet right in the flowers. Now these haven't quite opened up yet. Hey, hon, look how beautiful this is. Oh, this is beautiful. Look how pretty, Bella. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So get out your painting supplies and join me on a little creative adventure. Okay, so before we get started painting, I just want to let you know you have a few choices to make the painting for your background surface. The demonstration that I recorded is actually made on glossy photo paper by Costco, the Kirkland brand. You can also use stretched canvas 
canvas board, art paper. This is acrylic paper. You could also use watercolor paper. You can even use scrapbook paper. Even with different colors, even bright colors, they all work. It's just that if you use the paper, you wanna tape it down so it doesn't buckle. Here are a few of the brushes that we'll be using. If you don't have these specific brushes, it's okay. And here are a few of the tools we can use to make scratched out trees or little branches. For this demo, I'm using glossy photo paper and I'm spraying my plastic board with a little bit of water so it doesn't move around. You could also use a little bit of tape on the back of your paper. I like to draw a circle where I put the white paint to make it easier to see. Be sure to shake each of your paints before you start to use them. All right, we're ready to start the painting. Wet your brush, take off the extra water, pull that white into the blue a little bit. We don't need a lot of blue. And then just start painting from the top your sky. You'll go about halfway down your paper, adding white as you go. Great. So now go ahead and put your brush aside. I like to call that the parking lot. No need to wash it out. We'll be using it again. And we're going to use three paints to create background trees. Now these three paints would be your light green, your medium green, and I used my dark blue, but you could also use dark green. Notice how when you squeeze out the paint, you want it to be in a line, not in a puddle. It'll make it easier to load the brush. Wonderful. Now that your sky's done, let's do the background trees with a bristle brush. Make sure it's damp so that it holds the paint better. It should not be drippy. Squeeze out any excess water and then lightly tap into your paints and then onto your paper. To give a little volume to those background trees, let's put some shadow at the bottom part. So now we'll go to our dark blue, or maybe you're using dark green. Tap into that color and tap into the bottom of those trees. Great, now let's put that brush aside and pick up a pointy, hard instrument like a toothpick, or a palette knife, or a pen cap. And let's press down into that wet paint to reveal some tree trunks or little branches. For this process to work, your paint still has to be wet. It also works best on paper. Sometimes canvas doesn't really respond as well. Okay, so now we're ready to put in the water. Let's use our light blue and our medium blue and some white. And if some of green gets in the water, that's good too. Don't worry about it. We are going to just run that brush right across the bottom of those trees. Isn't that beautiful? Just overlap some strokes and see what you get. Depending on what surface you're using, you may see some of your green showing through. That's perfectly fine. It can actually look like reflections in the water. Great, now with the water done, let's move on to the soil. We're gonna use a brown. You might have two browns, you could use both. You can even use a little bit of orange and white. 
we're going to load up our brush and start near the middle and just kind of move around the rest of the paper putting in some strokes that are light and dark and also a little bit of variety in there so that it looks like there's sun and shadow on that soil. If you don't have two browns, that's fine. You'll get variety if you add a little bit of that orange or even a little bit of dark blue. As you continue to paint your soil, you'll want to make sure to create darker values, darker colors towards the bottom. It'll give a sense of depth to your painting. That's also where the orange color can come into play. Okay, so now let's use a pointy tool or some small brush with paint on it to indicate where the path will be. That way we know where we shouldn't put any greenery. Next, let's go back to our bristle brush and using the medium green, start to tap in some foliage. Try not to be too heavy handed on this part. Then you're gonna go into your light green and give at the background a little bit of look of sunlight. It can be your light green and some white and then we'll tap some in and other parts towards the front, just a tiny bit. Now it's time to put in some shadows with that dark blue. You could also use your dark green. And primarily that's gonna to be towards the bottom. Great job. Now, clean out your brush. We're about ready to start the bluebells. You want to really get that green out of there and then get the excess water out with your paper towels or a rag also works really well. We're going to use light blue and dark blue along with some white. Let's start by putting in the darker bluebells. It's really important to not have a brush that's wet. It can only be damp. And then just like we did earlier, just tap. I like to start near the middle or the front. Then we'll add in some lighter colors by adding white. Notice how I flip my brush so it's not always the same stroke. It can get easy to be carried away on this part. I think I might have, so you might want to stop a little earlier. Okie doke. So now let's take that small brush that we have, wet it, take off the extra water, and use some brown. Now, it would be good to use a darker brown here and very little paint to make our bench. That's where we can go and sit to see this beautiful landscape that we have created. Now there's potentially different places we could put that bench. You have to look at your painting and decide where it would look best. Two small strokes going down and then connect them with one horizontal stroke. The other way to do it is to make the horizontal stroke first and then the two strokes down. Okay, so it's time to put up our trees. This is where you want to have some black 
along with your brown. And when I do trees, you know, yes, we could do trees that grow from the ground and go up, but I have to say my favorite way to paint trees with people is to have us turn our paintings upside down. They tend to look less amateurish this way. So with black and brown, and if you have two browns, that's fine. Could even have some orange in there. I just kind of put my brush in and tap it in. And then always start at the ground, pushing hard, pressing that brush to your surface, and then go all the way down to the edges. What I love about this process is we end up with branches that are elegant and also the color changes from a very dark at the trunk base to lighter as it goes up the tree. All right, it's time to put our other trees in. I like to find a spot to start one tree and then make another tree start from a different height. It creates more depth. You'll notice that the paint that's brown turns green or maybe a little slightly different color as you go through the wet paint. Now, depending what surface you're working on, you may or may not get this effect. It all depends on how wet your paint is. Also notice as you paint on this surface that sometimes the paint doesn't adhere and it leaves a light area that happened while I was making this painting I wanted to show you how to correct it by simply putting some extra paint over the top of those light areas but in retrospect I wish I had left it because those light patches would have been nice dappled areas of sunlight on the tree trunks so when you do yours, if you do have lighter patches, don't feel like you have to make them all dark. To put in some little twigs, I used my toothpick, wet it with water, and then tapped in some paint on it. This is where that orange is really helpful too. And then I just dragged it along the surface to create little tiny twigs. I really like that look. It's not something you have to do. And maybe you have a little brush that could do the same thing. But if you don't have a little brush, it's a great way to make fine lines. Turning the painting around, you can really start to see how it's coming together. And maybe you'll decide that you'd like to add a few more branches here or there. Notice how I turn my board around different ways to make it easier for that paint to flow off my painting instrument. Bluebells also have pink in them. And so let's take some pink. I'm using a bright pink, but you might have a light pink in which you could add a little bit of red if you wanted to deepen the color. And we're just going to tap in ever so gently a few pink areas near the front primarily. Now you could also use just a little tiny brush to do this. I'm still using that big bristle brush. All right, so now let's wash out that brush from the pink, dry it well, and we're gonna put in some leaves, those beginning leaves that are yellowish color on our trees. Now I have to be honest, I think that in my painting I could have potentially gone without leaves or maybe not quite so many leaves. It, it, it'll be up to you. But try to make sure that you still see the sky through whatever leaves you do put on your trees. We're going to primarily use that light green, 
maybe a little bit of white with that, tiny bit of our second medium green. Again, make sure that brush doesn't have any drippiness to it. Little taps. Notice how I change the angle of the brush, moving it around and with my wrist. That's so much fun. And then I come into that slightly darker green, just for some contrast with the light green. All right, looks like we have a finished painting. So you can let that dry or you can do like me and get your hair dryer out and then sit back and enjoy what you just created. God bless you. Thanks for painting with me today. Okay, now it's your turn. Two, three, here's, here's to, to you. you. And the beauty in and around us. As I put the finishing touches on this video, I just want to give a huge thank you to my family, my daughter Nicole and my husband Michael, without whose support this video wouldn't have been possible. I wanted to help relieve some of the stress, suffering, and loneliness that people I care about are experiencing right now. And my family was so willing to help me to go out of their comfort zones with me. None of us knew how to do any of this when we started on this three weeks ago. We hope you enjoyed learning something new along with us. I know that for some of you, painting is out of your comfort zone too. All I can tell you is that if you have the willingness to try, I know you can do it. I'd like to close by thanking Almighty God, the Master Artist, for the immense beauty all around us that lifts our soul, and for the gift of the arts in our lives that bring us moments of peace and joy.